another lamp. I thought I'd take a look at one of the uh, cob lamps again and see if they're making any progress in terms of their construction. So this is a worm white one. It's got the six chips in it. It's rated 3 watts. It comes up, uh, well, 3.1, 3.2, and that suggests it's got a little switching power supply in it. Also, no flicker coming off this uh, visibly on the... on. The, I mean, most other lamps don't flicker if they've got any smoothing to the human eye. But uh, to the iPad, it's just not detecting flicker off this at all, which is good. So let's uh, take it to bits. And uh, I have to admit, I've already had this one to bits because I just couldn't resist it. So I'll just tuck that out of the way. Um, I really like the construction of this one. The front screws off, the front ring. And then there's a, the reflector and a plastic disc. And the whole arrangement, the reflector uh, and the disc and the cover, really does push this LED down properly. I don't know if there's any uh, heat sink compound under this yet. It does slide about, it's not glued around that, so I, I'll pull that out afterwards. Oh, I can actually, I can see the, hold on, uh, I think I can see that to answer that question. Yes, it's got heat sink compound under it. Okay, that's answered that. So this is a fairly standard cob. Now, the only slight oddity here is the, uh, technically speaking, there's going to be some level of isolation in the little um, switching power supply, but the back of this cover, I'll, I'll put this, it's chromed and is therefore conductive. So if I switch this to continuity and just touch the leads to the chrome, it's conductive. It's, although it's plastic, it's got that metalization. And it's kind of, it's not, it's a bit random about where you get a connection, but there are, are connections going onto this. So that is technically sitting down into this ledge, is it? Or is that just the reflector that's the glass? No, actually, now I'm th looking at that, I thought, is that glass going to just push down on that lip, or is it actually, hold on, I'm just going to just squish the LED and see if it moves. Oh, I think I might have made a slight mistake there. I'm not sure if this is actually pressing down that now. Suddenly it's dropped in my expectations. Okay. But uh, it's quite close to the positive and negative connections onto here. Mind you, the positive and negative connections themselves are quite close to the metal. But anyway, uh, ultimately you, you have to just guess that maybe there is a modest level of isolation and I think it, we've just come to accept that the Chinese think the little switchboard power supplies are properly isolated when maybe by our standards they're not and you know you have to assume with all sort of LED lamps of, that have metal reflectors that they could become live. Uh, it's just a safe precaution. So um, unscrewing this, it's a bit of a sweeping statement but you know it's, it's the case. It is the little switching power supply inside wrapped in uh, the typical transformer interwinding tape with that little isolation transformer there if it is properly isolating. Uh, proper separation, but you don't know what the, the separation of the windings is like. Um, it's got, uh, let's uh, short out that capacitor before I do it with my fingers. It's, uh, sh yep, it's dead. So we've got a full bridge rectifier in the input, I can see that. Uh, 4.7 mg fired, 400 volts, as is the case. And is this going to be a bright power or one of those SM chips? The chip number is Oh, I'm really struggling to read that chip number. It says DS1005. I'm not familiar with that. I'm going to have to check that uh Odd. Oh, I'm not sure about that. I don't know if... It, uh, is that the number that actually matters here? I think it is. Underneath it says CE7KAS, by the look of it. AB. But the DS1005 looks like the important number here. I'm going to have to check that up. The logo next to it the, looks like two squares overlaid to create a star. I'm not familiar with that chip. It's probably just another clone of the sort of bright power type chips. 
uh, the sort of generic things, but certainly the sort of layout on the board is that sort of couple of support components, a resistor and capacitor. Um, yeah, and then the output, just one diode and a little capacitor. It doesn't have to be that big because the frequency is quite high that's coming out of this. And then the wires going through to the cob, which uh, I'm guessing the voltage coming out of that will be in the region of the, you know, it'll be the usual 3-watt driver putting out about um, 9 volts to 12 volts. And the cob, which has six chips in it, will have three in series and another three in series and then those two wired in parallel. That's the usual arrangement. But yeah, it is. I was kind of keen in this lamp until I've discovered that, you know, I thought that was really pushing down hard on the cob to hold it against the heat sink. But I'm now not absolutely convinced. I'm seeing that slide about in there. So, oh, that's a shame because otherwise, you know, I was quite impressed at that. I really thought the plastic front was pushing that down, but it is just sitting on that rim. Oh, but um, yeah, so I wonder how well that's going to last. I wonder how, how good the adhesion, I wonder if, you know, it's going to actually, the. I don't think that, it's the, silly, it's the, st the sticky silicon uh, sort of heat sink compound goo stuff they've got. So uh, I'm not, that's not exactly going to bond it on completely without being pressed on. I really did think this was pressing it down. I, I, I'm not 100% sure now, I don't think it is. Hmm, that's uh, taking the shine off it. But other than that, uh, up to that point, I discovered that it was quite an interesting and nicely made lamp.